want to know what the heck is going on in the Genshin Impact story arc, but don't feel like wading through all the dumb, inane, boring filler that makes no difference to anything ever? Is the overall plotline of your favorite wallet assassination machine taking too goddamn long for your hypercaffeinated TikTok addict attention span to give a shit about? Welcome to poorly abridged Genshin story time, a time when I take all the information that I think is unimportant and boring in Genshin story quests and just get rid of it for you, so you can keep enjoying the gameplay instead of listening to the chalkboard scraping hacksaw named Paimon's English Dub. Shadows Amidst Snowstorms begins with Paimon being an idiot as per usual. She wants to turn some fruit into fruit juice, and although the fruit juice is canonically available in-game, she has no idea how this magical transformation happens. Her first thought is to go see Zhang Ling, a famously skilled chef who- Wait, no that's not it. Her first thought is to use alchemy. Upon arriving in Mondstadt, Paimon and the Traveler find Albedo storming away from a conversation with Sucro and Tamias, apparently looking upset while also looking exactly the same. When asked about his unusual appearance, Sucrose immediately, and without provocation, assumes that Tamias's research was so bland and useless that Albedo became enraged out of pure boredom from listening to it. Tell us how you really feel, Susu. Paimon then proceeds to bamboozle the leading experts in scientific research by requesting that they make her a goddamn blender. Sucrose claims that in her care, the fruits are more likely to be become bipedal than juice, and suggests asking Albedo, who, despite leisurely walking away only minutes ago, is undoubtedly halfway up a mountain over a mile away. En route, we encounter the Adventurer's Guild, running a winter training program on the mountain. Cyrus has had the brilliant idea to have people who are experienced teach the people who aren't. Wow! Gold star for you, buddy! Amber volunteered to be one of the experienced adventurers, but she was put on orphan babysitting duty because she's too low DPS. You you guys remember Joel? We met him a long time ago when we verified that his dad was pretty definitely super most likely dead, and just sort of pretended that he wasn't, and took the kid's money. Hey, Joel, you probably don't remember me, right? <laughs> Eula arrives and appears to have sustained a head injury. Build a snowman, Auntie Eula? Psychomantis. After the unwanted tertiary side character, and Joel, run away into the mountains, Eula, the cryo character, and this is true, adult human being, says that she doesn't know if she will be up to the challenge of building a snowman, and instead bails in order to teach Bolka here how to survive the frigid mountain environment during winter. Better hope they don't need to, uh, I don't know, uh, manipulate snow now. The million dollar question. What role will Gerald fill for the rest of the story? A. A hostage who needs to be saved. B. Convenient plot device. C. Secretly the bad guy the whole time. D. Is never referenced or heard from again. Put your answers in the comment section down below. Paimon doesn't feel like going around collecting things. That's literally this entire game, you dumb little goblin. And when do you ever do shit anyway? Wait, what was that suspicious noise? Quick, chase the noise. Our friends could be in danger. We need to find the source of that dangerous noise. Get out of the way, semi-intelligent beings actively trying to harm us. There's a dangerous noise to investigate. And it's definitely not coming from you. God. Damn it! We lost the noise! How could that happen? After all the adventures we've been on, our tracking skills are honed to perfection! Hello there! Ah! As our protagonists meet up with Albedo, they immediately forget every reason they previously had for coming to Dragonspine, and instead decide to learn how to paint. Then they forget to do that too, because immeasurably valuable alchemy notes that Albedo just left lying around in a cave have been stolen. Tracking the thief's footprints to the entrance of a cave, Albedo leads the Traveler to guard the cave entrance, and travels inside to continue the hunt. But that's fucking boring, so let's go collect rocks to make paint instead- oh shit, he's back. Uh, okay, that's not Albedo. We did some mining! Did you want us to bring all this ore back, or did you want to sort through and get rid of the useless bits first? <sighs> Humans are such practical creatures. They only want those things that are good. Useless things should be disposed of at the outset. Right! 
Speaking of useless things... God damn it, Bennett. How'd you get in there? Let me guess, a rock fell on your head or if something. If only there hadn't been rocks mixed in with the snow Ooh, on the tree. I knew it. It must have hit you pretty hard to make you forget that you are a pyro character in a wooden cage. Now, it's time for the plot to thicken. Intensely. Realizing Albedo is no longer with them, they travel back to the cavern as Paimon presumes that Albedo just doesn't really care about Bennett being kidnapped by the ice KGB. Wait, what? Albedo, found at the entrance of the cave, confronts the traveler, asking why he hadn't stayed to guard the front of the cave as he had requested, almost as if he wasn't there for the previous conversation that they had had. Oh, hey Eula. Hey, where's Gerald, Eula? Huh? What did you do with Gerald, Eula? Eula describes a scene that I very much wish hadn't happened off screen and accuses Albedo of having attempted to kidnap Joel. Albedo, with unparalleled nonchalance, deduces that a doppelganger is to blame for both the incident with Eula and the theft of his notes, to which everyone's response is collectively, oh. Uh, okay then. Oh, hey, Amber. What did you do with Joel, Amber? Oh, don't mind me. I just urgently ran out here to say nothing useful at all. Yeah, that tracks. Then Albedo takes the Traveler back to his science cave and reveals what this entire bullshit mission has been leading up to. That he is, in fact, an immortal homunculus created by the alchemical genius and creepy demon dogmaster, Gold. Although Albedo knew her as Rhyme Daughter his mother and teacher. Albedo says that although he is much older than he appears, he was created after Conria had been destroyed, and that he is a pure alchemist, seeking academic learning above all else, just like his mom. <laughs> right, because making a giant venomous dragon, a giant dimension-consuming wolf snake, and a giant explosion that wrecked havoc over an entire continent was just for science. I love how her creations were like an abyssal horde of wolf demons, a poisonous dragon who drives people into madness, and then just like <laughs> a chill dude. <laughs> anyway, Paimon and the Traveler agree to continue investigating this doppelganger problem while participating in the Adventurers Guild activities as a cover because apparently we now need a pretext to walk around up here, and we'll reconvene in a few days to discuss what they've found. Join us next time as our heroes investigate into even more insepid imposter incidents on Poorly Abridged Genshin Storytime. Peace.